Hello everybody, welcome back to the Learn Dota 2 League, Season 12, Week 4. Today, we got Nagas, we got Radiant Streets, we got No Ocelot, let's check it yep. out. We're definitely not just uh, desperately trying to get all the replays we missed through the week done on Saturday. That's not like us at all. No Sand King. Sand King right. just uh, immediately knocked out the rotation there. I think we have seen uh, a Can bit of Sand King on the Radiant Straits' behalf to this point, so. Five seconds yeah. Radiant team back. No Viper, says Radiant Straits. Been running uh, quite a bit of Viper on the team throughout yeah, the true. tournament. You know, he's Yield been a very there. popular pick for a while. So. Team back. The old Digi Viper has also been uh, pretty consistent. Getting rid of the alchemist here. They've been uh, they've been looking at the notes for game one. Did not want to see Lambert on that alk again. Yep. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Radiant team. No brewmaster. That's interesting. Feel like uh, the main person I've seen playing. The uh, brewmaster actually is lad of lad so far in this tournament. Oh. Oh yeah, seen a bit of the uh, Luke's brew too. I think first pick Jakiro instantly out with that one. Yep, pretty common Nogas pick. Pretty common everybody pick. Second, really only in this tournament to Ogre Magic. Though I do notice the rate of Ogres is starting to uh, steadily decrease. Five seconds remaining. Yep. Dire team pick. People starting to lose their taste for it, perhaps. Yeah, and I think there's also, to a degree, sort of the finding showing up that, eh, for the most part, Ogre just... Hasn't had that much success at the tournament. Certainly not enough to elicit an every single game sort of pick. Ten seconds remaining. Bringing up the lion first thing here. Probably going to see Five that on Magician. Remaining. Yeah, wouldn't be surprised. Team pick. Night Stalker. Perhaps that's a pause for Night Stalker. Yeah, maybe. Reality is, you're probably just doing that to deny uh, Nagas of the potential to pick him. Ten seconds remaining. Nagas have been, I would say, probably uh, one of the more prolific Night Stalker teams in this tournament. Not what I expected. Yeah. And apparently, somebody didn't expect that. Shoutouts to whoever that was, we can actually find out using the magic of this chat button. It was Lambert! Wow. Lambert didn't expect Night Stalker, I guess. Uh, I guess Magician was being all quiet when he picked that one. Yeah, yeah. Who are we picking, Coach? You'll see. Thinking about this one. Radiant team back. Naga. Oh my god. It's wow. Naga! And yeah, she Naga's has an attitude! That is a very early Naga pick. Yeah, certainly. Team back. Do you think we might be taking a look at uh, like the 2018 special, seeing a pause for Naga here, potentially? Mm, I don't know if I would go that far, but... It's an early Naga. Do, I, I do feel like, uh, as far as heroes to pick early go, if you're gonna do pause one Naga, that's gotta be pretty low on the list. Radiant team back. Yeah. No Ricky. 
It doesn't even have the, uh, the Song of the Siren Huel thing anymore, so. It does, actually. It's a shard now. What is the shard? Yes. Thought they changed that. Okay, I guess not. Yeah, so it's actually, theoretically, a support Naga could actually be even better than before because of that change, because now you can get the healing song way... I mean, like, theoretically later, but I mean, you're not going to get Ags before the shard becomes available, if you're like a pause 4 or 5, frankly, so... Uh. Though I do think, uh, like some of the old Ags, it has been generally slept on. I don't know if people have really given the healing Naga ult Quite as much credit as it deserves over the years. Ten seconds remaining. Nagas looking at some uh, some pause ones and twos here. No Terra Blade, no Void, no Ember Spirit. Yep. Radiant Straits actually, funnily enough, also knocking out a lot of ones. It seems that they're on the uh, same hunch that I am that Naga is not actually going to be their pause one here. It could be. I mean, like this could be a, no, a very, a great deceptive act. Five seconds remaining. It hits me. Uh, one thing that would actually uh, hurt the Poswan Naga even more if it was is the uh, the pick into Night Stalker there. One of the people Naga really doesn't like to see very much. No, I guess one uh, standing in right now. Could be. You uh, have a lot of name changes in this tournament. Yeah, that's true. Like, uh, Radiant Straits might have a uh, stand in pause too. Or that might be just Princess under a different name. I kind of doubt Princess is going under the name Suge2012, though. Yeah. But you never know. I mean, London's going under the name Tokyo. He's, that's a completely different city, so you know. Yeah, yeah, that's true. <laughs> Radiant team pick. There's your cranberry sprite pick. Yep. Surprisingly enough, we are not seeing the uh, the genesis of the pause for Night Stalker today. Uh, yeah. How we were looking forward to that. Five seconds remaining. Got a lot of ones knocked out here. I will this say. This is another one they just like baited a couple bands for no reason. Right. So that's good. Not only did they bait a lot Radiant of bands, they baited a lot of bands for uh, for the player who's really sort of Radiant Straight sort of star guy as well. There's Weaver just to make things more confusing. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds. That could be remaining. a support Weaver, could be a core Weaver. Dire team pick. Windranger at your service. Could be a support windrunner, could be a core windrunner. It's a mid windrunner. Presumably, yeah, but you never know. Naga's big time playing uh, playing the flex the flex pick lineup here. Really very difficult sure. to tell at this juncture who exactly their team is going to be built around. I seem five one three two right now, to be honest. It's my best assumption. I'm most confident about the two winner. So everything else just kinda of falls into place around that. Alright, Lush. Got Lush coming up. 
I believe. No, I'm pretty confident, actually. That's our first little track this tournament. Oh, there you go. Ten seconds remaining. That's super high damage, mid hero. I'm gonna combo well with the Shadow Shaman. Yeah. Since, you know, he can just keep you sitting there for a while. They actually have a load of Disable on this team. This is a very CC-tastic lineup between Lion, Night Stalker, Shadow Shaman, and Lashrak. Yeah, and I mean, they have two sources of two CC, so... Right. Stalker, uh, personally doesn't stun you, but he does slow you pretty handily and silence you, which is almost as bad. Hey, boys, right. Bash. And he does buy Bash Typically. pretty traditionally, yeah. Ten seconds. It might not happen this game. Every time I've said that this tournament, they've gone on to not buy the item, so. Funnily enough, I think Lambert's team actually put him in a rather rough position here. They have banned so many, so many. They're thinking pause three for the last here. It appears they've uh, they've gone off the idea that it's going to be support Naga. They're back onto one and uh, assuming four waiver. A lot of the uh, classic pause ones are actually out of this rotation. All right, let's see if this answers our question or adds more. I think I'll answer it. There's not much they can do to you know, create more flex. Even if they do, they don't have much time left to do it. Ten seconds remaining. Five seconds remaining. Taking their, uh, their, their time here. I'm glad we get to see Shaman's stupid dance this whole time. <laughs> techies! Uh, it's a four, four techies, so. My lineup still works. They really did go and pick a one second pick, huh? That's very daring. Oh, well, it worked. Yeah, to this end, uh, Radiant Straits has to pick up a really late pause one here, or else uh, they're going to be in the position, the unfortunate position of playing against Techies with a team that's going to be hard pressed to end early, yet also a team that's not going to outscale them late. Yeah. So they need to, need to either pick somebody who's going to win it in five minutes or pick somebody who's going to win it in 60. The, uh, the techie in the front of the cart, I believe that's Squee. Looks like, uh, he really needs to take a visit to the restroom, dude. Yeah. We got Bloodseeker. Yeah, they're going all in on the, uh... I believe that's uh well, they're getting into techies too. Unless they're unless they're doing some wacky stuff with the landing. I believe that's two windrunner, that's three weaver. That's four Naga! One techies! Not one techies, dude. It's just a stand-in. Yeah. Yeah, presumably we're gonna have some uh Naga lane comp wackiness today. I would be very surprised if this is how we're actually going to be uh, landing things. We do indeed have a stand-in for the mid on Radiant Straits. Yep. Lambert is going to be... They, they, they've done a good job putting Lambert outside of his normal comfort zone today because not only is he missing Princess, who, uh, as, as we said before, the real magical Lambert is that sort of... Uh, is that sort of team up with the Princess, right? Not only are we missing that for him, he's also going to be playing in a more early game focused hero. And to this point, he hasn't really been doing that very often. We saw good results with him trying that on Razor earlier. Yep. But it's certainly, I would not say, uh, 
a traditional pick for Lambert. Be interesting to see how it goes. It's definitely going to be a, you know, sort of a doomsday clock sort of scenario. Naga outscales all of them. Like, if this game goes, like, 80 minutes, Naga's going to be able to 1v5 pretty handily, to be honest with you. Yeah. Though that does come with the caveat that Naga is also, presumably, playing out of traditional position here. Wow, Cranberry Sprite's actually playing the Lion here rather than the, uh... Rather than the, the Shaman. I got Magician on the Shaman. That's rare. Prepare for battle. Pause one, Tackies. As Naga runs to the safe lane. <laughs> Gotham, by the way, is sponsored by Tacos. If you're a taco, you've been sp you've sponsored Gotham, it seems. Wow. Could be Taco Bell. Could be Taco Casa. Could be a lot of other places tacos, we're not getting sponsored all by. All tacos in general. <laughs> it's gonna like we're just gonna get censored on the live cast. Easy breezy. <laughs> like if you just like make a taco for yourself, that's a. Uh... It automatically appends itself to Gotham. Exactly. Just like Lambert is, uh, not only a meme, but sponsored by Magic Mushrooms. Wow. Lot of lads, of course, still on the road to Herald. I wish him luck. Do you think he's on the road to Herald from a higher matchmaking bracket, or he's <laughs> uncalibrated? Guess so. He could be uncalibrated, you know? Road to Herald from be. uncalibrated. The battle begins. I wish it was like a sub herald matchmaking bracket. Sub herald. I don't know if that's necessary to be honest. It's not, it'd just be funny. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing happening at the runes here as uh nobody really is that a stand in? Yes, magician. It is a stand in. You've got a stand in too. <laughs> Are we being memed? Is it like not a stand-in? Is it just a normal player? <laughs> Cause there've been- I, okay, I guess <laughs> wait, we gotta pause to consider yeah. this. <laughs> Gotham has to pause, Don't like, hey, pass. wait a minute. Why are they being so cagey about it? Techies is not a stand-in? Why do we pause to discuss this? What the- what? Okay, this is really odd. All right. Apparently, uh, Techies is their uh, their pause one prior. So he's changed his name, so he's just Captain Viral why now. That, again, why was that so such a cagey way of getting around that? Ah, true. He's, here he is. He's uh, in the other Naga's games. What the hell's his name in them? Good question. Uh, it's Manifest Destiny. Okay, it's Manifest yeah. Destiny, alright. <laughs> there you go. He, he's here to confuse not just the enemy team, but also the commentators. So, let's uh, let's go down the list here. Pause 1, playing in uh, out of normal position quite considerably. Uh, Gotham on the Naga Siren, uh, captain of the team. Pause 2, we've got Dij on the Windrunner. Pause 3, we've got, uh, I believe that's Luke's on the Weaver here. I mean, it has to be, because it's tackies, yeah. right? Pause 4, we've got a traditional pause on Manifest Destiny on tackies. Currently known as Captain Virile, though, uh, I will not entertain this name change because I'm, uh, stuck in my old ways. And pause 5, we have Peaches on Magic Hero. For, uh, the Radiant Straight, we have Lambert, pause 1, as the Bloodseeker. We have Standin, Ajur, as pause 2 on the Lashrak. We have Lada Lads, pause 3, on the uh, Night Stalker. Lion just ran over the uh, Jakiro while we were calling that. Let's use the magic of, uh, magic of seeing what happened here. I just Jakiro just got straight run over here. It is a pretty nasty combination of people. Yep. Cranberry Sprite on the pause 4 with that first blood. 
has been killed. And the courier assassination. And Magician, pause five on the Shadow Shaman with the uh, team captain. Yep. And uh, Manifest Destiny has denied himself. Alright, there you go. Stackies for you. Lambert calling out where he believes mines are, and he's right. One thing uh, they are going to have to deal with here is that not only do you have Techies, who's a pretty good way to stop any sort of early game offensives going on, you also actually have the Weaver as well, who's going to be uh, making things less than satisfying for them as they try to push. Yep. You know, the thing with Weaver is, is that he's, he doesn't have the greatest wave clear. I mean, Sakuchi does a good enough job for that, but more it's like, whenever you're pushing against a Weaver, especially a core Weaver, you're always sort of taking a risk to some degree, you know? Yeah. And, uh, to that end, it's not that hard to put yourself in sort of an unfortunate situation there. Supports uh, down a bot having a quite a fun time as uh, Cranberry Sprite just straight up ruins one of Paige's bulls. Uh, Gotham getting poked. Uh, more Cranberry oh, getting poked, yeah. poked really. Yeah. <laughs> Finds it funny at least. It was pretty funny. Radiance Middle Tower is under I are so far fairly dominant with their uh, last hitting performance with uh, yep. Lambert right at the top, Ajur the stand in right below. I mean, I guess that could be Princess. Maybe this is like a two people change their name at the same time sort yeah, of situation. Maybe. I hope not. It's really going to change the comment. You're just going to confuse rather the commentators. Yeah, Dire Queen, clean sweep all their cores uh, above the equivalent Radiant cores for last hits, oh. and some by a fairly considerable margin. I mean, Night Stalker's up by one, but Bloodseeker's up by uh, about ten. Yeah, that's the, Lambert uh, for you. Naga has to uh, basically be running confusion through foo, through this... Uh, Lane phase in general as uh, not go without mana. Not really going to do much for you. So she's going to have to continually uh, try and basically sort of fool Lion into mana draining illusions, just wasting his time. Forcing uh, Jakiro to burn up the pole camp here, funnily enough. Yep. Now forcing Jakiro to uh, die, I think. He's okay. Courier is it? Okay. Arrow diving very pretty good, hard. Uh, very good timing on the sab there. Probably just saved his own life. Yeah, and Gotham picked up the uh, the early ensnare. A tithe to the impurities. I already had that before that started, I believe. Sorry. Wife. Wife. That girl. That girl. <laughs> okay. Just get accent. There we go. Well, uh, Gotham, I believe, successfully survived uh, the wife aggro there. They survived the gank by his wife. <laughs> Somehow. Gotham's life is a known pickoff uh, expert, so it's a bit surprising he managed to survive that. Radiant is starting to equalize the uh, last hit chart here a little more. Oh well. Oh, oh boy. Very likely it for Weaver here. Even yep. pulled the lion in here. So absolutely guarantee that kill. Just uh, gets himself caught out on that silence there. Looks like you're actually not uh, taking. Well, Techies might have uh, got a bridge too far in oh, uh, attempt to get revenge. Lambert now two and zero. 
So far, three kills on the Dyer, who have now turned back around to a uh, firm lead at the last hits. Bloodseeker, ten last hits and two kills. Well, one yep. kill above anybody else. Two kills in the server overall. A golden thread. Though, they did have to pull Lion out of there, so Naga is going to be uh, a lot more free to do whatever she wants for a little while. They actually have blocked off a lot of the uh, camps here. Bloodseeker you puts all of his uh, money so far into getting a Midas. Yep. It's going to be a little difficult for them to deal with, to be frank with you. It's level 6. Yeah, just quick in the pace, and uh, you get the super funny niche benefit of you just instantly heal whenever you Midas a creep. It's true. Which I'm sure has uh, resulted in sick plays about one time in history. <laughs> yeah. I mean, theoretically, it's not as niche as it sounds, because you're going to yeah, have a true. lot of early game fights that are going to be relatively near the creep waves. One of me ain't enough. The issue is people really like uh, keeping that strict timing on Midas, you know. Zero seconds of downtime. Good stun out of the wind run here. Oh, only little. Oh, okay. Even better stun in, uh, in return. Went under having to put all of her resources into running away here. I don't think that could have been timed better. Sick. Very good rotation. Very good uh, stun by the Lashrak as well. And that's a stand. That's like too. a well-oiled machine right there. Right. I think you're uh, I think you're starting to see the Radiant Straits team. You know, perhaps, f funnily enough, I feel like uh, in the recent weeks we've seen a bit of a uh, a bit of a fall down in that really strong the the biggest strength of the uh, Willow Twisted Fantasy team, which is you know the insane cohesion, right? And I think perhaps the lack of success in some of their recent games would have something to oh, do well, with that. Seems but... to be rather dead here. On the other hand, uh, yeah, he is just completely screwed. Everybody rotates to get him. On the other hand, though, perhaps the recent success by the uh, Radiant Straits, who has, I believe, been defeated one time the last three weeks. Well, four weeks, yes. actually. Has uh, sort of instilled that, uh, you know, that sort of idea of teamwork within them. Not to say that they had you know, no chemistry or no rotations or whatever before, but rather, uh, not really to this level, I would say. Techie's uh, attempting to, to help Naga out here, get oh, a kill. Boy. Goes down for it, but uh, Naga does get what she was after as a result. Unfortunately for Night Stalker, the very moment he's ready to go in on the Naga in return, uh, daytime. Yeah, that's a shame. It happens. Three people for NWA still at mid here. Still looking for more uh, pressure on that Lashrak. Oh, Lambert yep. is actually getting more or less free farm up here. She's a dangerous prospect, man. Very dangerous yeah, prospect to, uh, to let old Lambert just casually farm up. Is he just running right for MKB? Oh no, he's getting a... Uh, yeah. He's getting... The uh, phase boots for Phase boots melt from you. Yeah. Weaver and the uh, Lashrak oh, both going down. Windrunner barely oh, prevented from escaping. Very good timing on the Hex there. Lambert having uh, deployed for battle here. Shakira running for his poor life. Yeah, brother Shakira will be you. running to the grave. You know, big counter to Bloodseeker. Nullified if Shaman's anywhere around, or Lion's anywhere around, or Night Stalker's anywhere around. Right. Or Lashrak is anywhere around, <laughs> so there you go. Luke's coming in for round two, though, uh, perhaps this was not the, uh, the round he wanted to have. Lambert actually could not care less, he does not want a part of, uh, Luke's here. Which, uh, might bite him. how well they picked, uh, around this Bloodseeker, I think. Ah, uh, he's dead here. No, Ooh. he's okay. going back there. 
He is indeed dead. Oh man. Both techies okay. and the Weaver going down to uh, Lashrek and Bloodseeker respectively. Windrunner coming in and just I get a free, 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 free kill on Lashrek. That was extremely hectic. I do think there was a bit of misplay on uh, what exactly the priority was during that fight. I think if Bloodseeker had ignored the stack and kept fighting, then he would have secured the stack for himself and been able to actually farm it out. Instead, it's just still there for Naga, unfortunately. He did bash up uh, quite a bit of it. No, actually, he bashed up the whole of it. So yeah. he did get the stack at the very least, so there was that. Still, I feel like uh, would have resulted in less casualties, if nothing else. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Wonder Runner just uh, solo ran up a tower here. The tower is actually the most mine support around, which is to say not much. Manifest Destiny has very clearly been playing techies so far more for the uh, the blast away rather than the actual mines. Oh, we might see some funny mine action here. Oh, like that for instance. Yeah, the Radiant blast off play. Instantly, you know, shredding half this offlane to a about half of their HP, making this push a little less confident. Well, he was trying to go somewhere else there, but uh, he will not be... He's going somewhere else, all right. Uh, back to base. We do have a successful push. Uh, first tower of the game, Dire top T1, though the Radiant bot T1 will soon follow. Radiant Straight's definitely going to be unhappy that the, uh, that the NWA just barely cut off the most time-honored tradition of this entire tournament. Yeah, yeah. You know, there's three things you do in LD2L. You kill that bot tier 1 in Radiant, you kill the, uh, or not you kill the, but rather you kill the bot T1 for Radiant, you draft Ogre Magi, and you flame Heelys. So three Lion. things you do. Looking for those two blinks, uh, one for each eye, as I stated last time. This came up, which is more than once, apparently, in this tournament, for some reason. I don't think he's actually going to be buying two blinks. Yeah, well, of course not. It's just, uh, on his quick play. Yeah. Kiro getting very hassled out here, just kind of, uh, picked yeah. apart as, uh, NWA's kind of struggling to decide who exactly they're going to go in on. Ultimately decide the, uh, man of the hour is indeed the lion. Easy kill. But, uh, Windrunner is gonna though. die for it. It was not as easy as they anticipated. Winner dies for it straight up to Lambert, which I've got to say is not exactly a great trade for them. That's a high punish lineup. They have so much CC, it's actually ridiculous. Right. Like, you can't uh -oh, TP Lesh. anywhere around them. Lesh is oh. really low. I think he's okay. Yeah. Yeah, if they had actually gotten the ice path out on him there, I think he would have been dead. So low for the trouble. Loaded to the gills. Siege on T1 mid here is still going on as uh, both teams are still just making a concerted effort, you know, radiant to attack the uh, NWA to defend. Yep. A lot of uh, offense on the yep. sentry ward here. It's a lot of techies pokes. Classic. Lion just gonna go oh, down boy. again to the Windrunner. Windrunner again gonna pay for it. Though without uh, last year this time, they have a little bit less to do about it. Yep. Bloodseeker buying more things rather than the. Uh, I mean, he didn't even get that jab when he was looking at it. Now he's just going for S and Y, it looks like. Still has not yeah, actually got phase. Brother Night Stalker, uh, formed. Night Stalker actually has DD here, but unfortunately Radiant's vision advantage right now it means that he really is not going to be able to do much with it. Yep. Especially considering they are not going to fight outside of under that vision. Magician is dead. Yep. Uh, Ganks, he is going uh, to get the tower Ganks for it, though. Well, maybe not, actually. This is really the 
probably the right idea for the NWA here. Just desperately making sure they lose as few towers. I, I actually wouldn't have uh, denied it. I would have actually seen if I could save it long enough to go for another glyph here. Just buy as much time as humanly possible and make every single siege as slow as possible and force them to bring out all their cores whenever they want to do anything of value. They're uh, looking into the Shrek up here. The Shrek uh, has not seen them to any significant degree. And it's just getting completely totaled here. Yeah. It's eaten by the Nog and the Windrunner. I will say the, uh, I understand why the Lesh is split pushing, but ironically, as good as it is against Techies, it's really, really bad against the rest of their lineup to the point where I feel like you could almost, uh, reasonably get away with saying it's exactly what Techies wants you to do. He wants you to split to, uh, to not have to deal with them here. Being very hesitant around this tower, uh, predicting a lot of defense for it, but reality of the situation is they're not even home. Left for it. Luke's is here, but uh, Luke's is not going to be able to do much here. With uh, Night Stalker around and nighttime still underway, Luth really has no ability to do terribly much to, uh, to defend himself here. NWA turned away from the top tier too. Yep. Just having to retreat through the dire jungle. They're kind of posturing here. Night Stalker really wants to go in. It's a lot of mines, like, right here, actually. It's kind of an odd spot for them. Probably just looking for Lambert with them. Yeah. Almost, uh, Night Stalker almost inadvertently just ran right over them. And now Lashrak's gonna inadvertently run right over them. Yep. <laughs> Drag. It's like a million out. of them, too. <laughs> kind of surprised it didn't blow there. I think he wants Lambert, not Lush. Right. So being a Lush, though, we have uh, quite a lot of punishment on the Weaver here. Not quite enough to kill. It's gonna drive him out of lane. Four out, though. Poor, poor uh, Luke's, man. He is not in a great position with the Weaver this game. They actually have quite a good response lineup for him. You can't build Lincolns, because they can just... Uh, they got too many things that stun right through that anyway. Can't build... Uh, well, a lot of things go through the BKB. He's just going to be in uh, quite a lot of trouble, and he is going to need a BKB to get really anything done. The tower here bought. T2 Radiant bot. Night Stalker actually wants to stay and fight, but that uh, might be a bit of a mistake here. Lion's going down, Lambert just showing for uh, the organizer treat. Yep. Mission getting hassled by uh, Naga Siren uh -oh. here in the uh, jungle. Oh, Naga's just gonna song sing here. right away. Yeah, maybe more of a defensive song in the look. She's not as far as she'd like to be from the. Especially in light of that, I don't know where the uh, stun was. He's out of mana, I guess. There is the stun. Oh dear. And there goes uh, Naga Siren. Very casually yep. losing, only losing the spree, losing it to Bloodseeker, which isn't exactly ideal. He is uh, very dominant on the net worth charts right now, as you might expect. As I said, distressingly farmed. Got a full Mjolnir, he's got a, he's got Yasha in. Likely... Full S and Y coming in, yeah. Yeah, about to turn that into an S and Y. Which uh, gives him the opportunity to uh, to turn that into a Halberd and a Manta style later if he wants to do that for some reason. That's yeah, possible. Funnily enough, they got vision on the uh, mines enough down there to know they're not really worth worrying about. Philosopher's Stone for the uh, for the Radiant here could actually be a very major factor, something they really want to have. After all, as I said before, you know, Radiant, they are the Doomsday Clock team this game. Something like the Philosopher's Stone uh, does Dyer's get you there quite considerably faster. Yep. Dyer's structures are fortified. 
the uh, T1 mid here, barely saved out by uh, Fortify. Dyer's middle tower has been Two denied. people on the Dyer smoking in. Night Stalker and Lion both smoking in here. Oh boy. Lambert. Try to clear mine's yeah. melee. Lambert trying to uh, melee clear here. Tech, he's uh, found a regen room, but didn't get very far with it. Bloodseeker actually very smartly uh, using the distraction to uh, to try and clean up the mines there. Magician goes yep. down after dropping snakes. Unfortunately, Weaver just immediately phases out of it. Was going for the combination with the Bloodseeker silence. Unfortunately, that silence just did not erupt quite as fast as perhaps he would have wanted. Yep. Looking for the uh, stun on the Weaver there. Actually misses the stun. Ooh, Somebody yeah. bravely TBing right in his snakes here. Got them. Taking quite a bit of punch before getting anything done. Cranberry Sprite oh, run over with an Acropyr. Well, Shrek, uh, actually oh, getting no. getting the Naga Siren pretty directly killed. Bloodseeker knocks out the uh, Weaver, though loses a Night Stalker to the Windrunner. Techie's going down. Nobody really in any good position to fight anymore. Bloodseeker did do the, the funny, you know, funny use the Midas to get HP trick there. Really even fight there, again. Yeah, the Windrunner is becoming very dangerous very quickly. As many answers as they have to people on their team, they really have nothing to say about her. She's allowed to get her ult off. Whoever she's looking at really pretty much dies, unfortunately for them. Until uh, the potential point where uh, Night Soaker gets a Halberd, and he's not looking at that. They really have nothing to say about it. It's not like these guys can really effectively build Blaymail after all. Right. Lush is looking at Yules as a solution, potentially. But, uh, that is a good solution. That does mean that if he if he's saving the Yules, as we tell, saw him not do in that last team fight, if he saves the Yules for the uh, Windrunner ult, then he is missing out on the ability to use it to uh, key up a stun. That's true. Magician's just about to die here. Everybody in the world is uh, coming for him here. All he can do is just prolong his death. Yep. Thanks, gig. It's a dangerous shot of getting vision out. Right. Ultimately, did not, I believe, actually get the vision there. Just taking out the Dire T2 top here. Seeing a lot of response. A little of a defense here. If Radiant does not actually want to fight this out, they just wanted to hassle to get the hell out of there. Actually smoking for a retreat. Nah, I gets ping. Got Silence on too here, but Lalaz actually does not want to go in alone. It seems that that Dyer has just as little desire to actually fight this out as Radiant does, and so both teams just completely disengage. Yeah, everyone's skirting around that fight pretty well. I will ultimately say, letting them just kind of leave a situation like that, where they work pretty deep in their territory, is going to be, I, I would say, generally not a good thing for the Dyer. It would probably have been better to take that than to just let them go. I think they, if they take it, they get bunged and put into an unfavorable position. I don't think there is an unfavorable position to get put in songed at this juncture, to be honest with you. Especially with Macro down. Macro, really, pretty much your only really big team fight ult aside from, you know, Song itself. It's not exactly within the spirit of a team fight ult. It's like a initiate ult or a disengage ult, you know? We no damage need on there. need an answer to Wonder before they start fighting. So, I don't have that well, yet. Unfortunately, if they if they if they uh, if they wait to try and build an answer for Windrunner, as unfortunate as it is, they're not going to win the game. It's just simple as that. They do not have time to uh, build counters 
It's the luxury is not with them by any stretch. If they uh, stop to fully build up a halberd or something of that nature before they uh, start fighting, if they get that messed up by her, right? And they're going to get messed up by her. She's going to get a free kill pretty much every fight until we get a halberd. Don't don't get me wrong. But that's just a free kill that you're going to have to let happen, more or less. You cannot let them uh, walk away from fights. You do not have the time. Very casually doing rush here. Radiant appears to be trying to finish off the uh, T2 top. Well, right. Seeker getting the Aegis. Almost that's dying brilliant. for it. Ultimately, just going to bash go his... Uh, yep. Bash his HP up on the local creep waves. Ninja Naga actually pulled the illusions out there. Might have been an accidental control click or something. Or maybe they're trying to bait a chase into the woods. I don't know. Are right, taking out the outpost? Actually, make actually putting themselves into a position where they're really looking at that bot T3. If they can take it. Lambert's got spider legs. Ouch. That's uh, rather annoying. Speaking of rather annoying. And double damage. And he's going all in on that Naga illusion. Yeah. At the moment, I don't think anybody on the die really has a very clear idea of where anybody on the radiant is or what they're doing. I believe they're completely yep. out of the vision here. Only uh, Luke's has showed on that because he's bashing creeps. Luke's actually appears to be going for, uh, yeah, he's going straight for Lincoln's here. I don't know if I particularly am going to say that's going to be great here because literally everybody has at least two things to deal with it, so I don't think you're going to be blocking anything particularly great in these fights. So, the frame that it buys you for Weaver is, like, he's one of the most important guys to buy a frame, so the frame you say by not getting, say, hexed. Well, you are still in danger of getting hexed again, you can't hit R just as easily. Dyer looking to uh, invade the triangle with this uh, smoke, though I cannot say... It's probably going to work out that well for them. This is uh, pretty much the central point of where they got the mines oh, no. here. Okay. Speaking of uh, green mines, Lestrag is casually going down up there. Teki is getting the eaten the by uh, the Bloodseeker and Nightstalker combo, but he's really all they're getting at this point. Naga actually just casually eating the... Uh, oh boy. Eating on the side, but now she's the one getting eaten perhaps. Has to uh, TB out. Meanwhile, Luke's actually just completely uh, ratting up top here. Beat up uh, about a third of the health off the T3 here. Yep. Realize he was kind of within a rock and a hard place and just got Dyer's the hell out. Top tower is under attack. Understandable. Radiant Straits, uh. They're still up for uh, net worth, and Lambert is still very, very scary, but the time is starting to really tick for them. I feel like uh, we're really just... With, with that Naga BKB coming in, it's going to start getting harder and harder for them to accomplish much. You got the Lincolns on winner, it's going to make him, make it harder and harder for them to accomplish much. Hunting in the jungle here, but again, just gets spotted out. Everybody leaving before anything gets done. Yep. Everybody just runs their hurdle position. Lambert's saying, screw it. Just get the, uh, clicking for people around them, actually. Very convinced somebody's here. Not actually the case. I just saying, screw it, let's get the T3, maybe? They're looking back at the triangle there. This could be a major disaster for them. In no uncertain terms. Goodbye, magician. Sad. I mean, magician's the one you want to be taking those, so it's whatever. They're just going to uh, knock down the T3 down here. We have a glyph in retaliation because you always have a glyph on the enemy team when you don't want to see. They actually offensively glyph in response, though. So 
Doesn't really matter quite so much. Nagas here has BKB, no uh, recourse for them to do anything here. Night Stalker just gets completely annihilated by pretty much everything they got. Bloodseeker still fighting in here though. Pages oh. and uh, the techie's going down. BKB. Naga sings. Naga sings, but uh, she does not have uh, <laughs> she does not have long to do so. Bloodseeker calls her right is. there. He's in a very unfortunate position here. Lush actually likely going to have to die to get him out of here. Well, okay, well maybe not. the Weaver actually maybe just zone. very freely dying out. Oh. Lush, uh, good in theory. Where is that the there. And oh. down goes the Bloodseeker. Got some good procs there. Loses a godlike. I feel like the uh, opportunity is closed as a result. I don't think. Radiant Straight has much of a recourse anymore. They did get the Naga out there, which is good, but on the other hand, Windrunner just got a godlike. <laughs> Windrunner just got a godlike, and uh, at this point, really still no sure, response yeah. to her at all. Still not particularly that scary net worth was, but. Yeah. I feel like even with the net worth advantage that the Dyer has, I feel like it is actually in Radiant's favor. You know, 6... 6k, uh, on the Dyer at this point is not, like, enough to, I think, make up for the sort of difference in the strengths of the heroes. Even here at 30, they're already fairly being scaled out. Flesh in particular is starting to have fewer and fewer options as more and more cores on the uh, Radiant pick up the BKBs. You can see here, you know, he's getting completely demolished by Naga Siren. Happens. In fact, uh, since Dyer glyphed defensively in the uh, last fight, Lion and uh, Shaman actually going down as well. Since Dyer glyphed in the last fight, there's a decent chance Radiant's just going to be able to just knock over the tower and just keep going in here. Try and buy him back to uh, try and get the counterattack in. Radiant actually not quite as bold. Actually backing off here. He's trying to potentially get something done here, pulling them into mines in the jungle, but... Not, uh, Ra the Dyer not actually going to buy it at all. Everybody kind of looking at each other. Radiant desperately wants uh, the Dyer to try and pop in there. Nobody's taking this bait though. Everybody's That's what you have lane. to do with the techies, unfortunately. It's pretty much his only way to contribute in fights is to, you know, accept that someone on the enemy team will fall for really easy bait. Invisibility. And if they don't, you don't really do anything, aside from defend. Right. Speaking of defend, they might be having to make another defensive effort here soon, as uh, all of uh, all of Dyer, except for the Lashrak, really converging on this T3 bot here. Oh, Windrunner. Windrunner are actually in a bit of trouble. They actually Just popped the Lincolns. Yep. They got no bashes. Absolutely no bashes to speak of. Even if they did, she was wondering, so... Yep. Offensive song here. They have everything out, though, uh, Bloodseeker immediately pops the BKB the second it's over. Nightstalker yep. just gets completely eaten here. Just has nothing to say. Naga oh, actually God. goes down, which is very good for them. Jack gets Lambert onto a million mines. He doesn't actually die, though, uh, oh. Pecky's blast off finishes his job. Naga Siren buys back. They are likely going to lose T3 here. Yep, T3 going down. Though man, they sure lost a lot to do it. Oh no, Naga bought back. And yeah, Naga bought back, actually, uh, not probably where she wanted oh, to be, boy. exactly. 
I believe that was uh, Techie's buyback as well. They actually both uh, both went down to that buyback. Lesh actually coming in to play cleanup crew. Unfortunately for the uh, the Radiant, because they have so much uh, focus around the, the BKBs and their itemization, when their items and everything are down, if Lesh shows up at the end of a fight, they really can't do much to the guy. Yep. Radiant's top tower is under attack. Top T1 for Radiant actually still there. Pretty classic. I'm shaking a lot of attrition here. Oh god, yeah. Has to pop Bloodstone to keep his uh, HP up. It's funny because a couple of years ago, uh, you popping Bloodstone to get your HP back up. I mean, it did do that in a very indirect way. In theory, it works, yeah. <laughs> the very roundabout fashion, you know. Night Stalker finished up the eggs. I was going to be able to uh, to avoid a pretty big area. Some more CC on that team. Yep. We're gonna have Roche here. Not a bad idea. They don't actually have any mines there. They have mines here. Gets sure Lion, do. almost gets the uh, Night Stalker, who is uh, trying to figure out exactly which way he should be leaving the jungle right now, I think. Ultimately, the answer? Not at all. Lesh finds a leveler. Might have Glad to hear that Lion well. predicted his own death. <laughs> Timeless Relic could be interesting on some of these guys. Yeah. Debuff duration. Does that apply to Rupture? I assume it does. I would assume so, yeah. Wouldn't... Yeah. Actually, uh, getting the level here, which is not a bad idea in itself. I believe the uh, the debuff duration would also apply to uh, the length of Lesh's stun and the uh, slow from the lightning. A lot of lads just getting completely knocked out. Nice Stalker at this point seems to have been more or less uh, written out of this game as the rest of his team just completely leads up the road. Oh, boy. Radiant comes in, but just a second too late. I believe they did steal uh, the shard there. Uh, rather awkward. Better Lesh got it. Hard to say. Fight still going on by these, uh, by the Roche pit here. It's starting to sort of turn against, uh, well, against cores of both teams. Lion just immediately going down. Actually has the Aeon Damn. Disc. Completely uh, lets him survive. Weaver just getting eaten by the Bloodseeker there. Bloodseeker wanting to go in for the Naga Siren here. Going down himself. Windrunner in uh, quite a precarious spot actually going down to the Bloodseeker. Man. Jira just has to TP out. And goodbye, Lambert. No, actually, uh, does not get the mines off in time for Lambert. Just gets them in time for a uh, lion. Nagas lose these fights even with the most unfavorable sorts. It's very concerning. Most unfavorable sorts for uh, Radiant Straits, who are dire, of course. Right. A lot of that is... Uh, a lot of that, I think, is just the fact that... Uh, for the most part, Weaver's getting knocked out before anything serious happens in these fights. Yep. Weaver's got a lot to add to these, especially in the light of uh, the armor break there. You know, Weaver's ability to armor break makes Naga just really difficult to deal with. Makes Windrunner's already pretty much guaranteed kill at this point. Not only guaranteed, but come out incredibly fast as well. It really is a sight to see. Like, that fight looked so bad. For them, I'm trying to offensively song up here. Yep, we'll Just find get the uh, uh, shaman. Uh, Lambert is here. Yep, Naga just has to uh, pop BKB, try to run. Though, uh, oh, I can't that run with that on you, though. With the rupture on, she really can, but she can easily uh, knock out <laughs> knock out Lambert in the uh, macro, though. So. Does die immediately. Alright, core for core. Aesthetics cap dropped here. Hopefully that's theirs. Yeah, hopefully it didn't die to like a male from nope. proc from Bloodseeker. Okay. No, that did die to a male from proc from Bloodseeker. That is a dire aesthetics cap. That's really stupid. I can't even blame them for that. <laughs> <laughs> no, Why actually, I'm pretty sure. Happen? I'm pretty sure they just fell out of a creep while Bloodseeker was doing it before he turned around to fight the Naga. Yeah. So you know, we can uh, we can shake our heads and say why Lambert why. 
That's fine, it's not a particularly useful item. I mean, it's okay, but... It's, it's not, definitely, it's not unfortunately, it's not... b way better for the Radiant than it is for the Dire. Just being, like able to, a being able to just put that on and immediately get rid of the, not immediately, but uh, get rid of the Rupture pretty quick order, get rid of the uh, Lash Slow pretty quick order, get rid of the uh, Void pretty quick order, so on and so forth. Uh, only yeah. enough, it does a lot more for the Radiant. I would not be surprised to see uh, somebody pick that thing up. Yep, Weaver actually got it, which is uh, one of the worst people to see it on, actually. That was the shard. They actually left the shard in the pit. Okay, okay. well, there you go. All the time, shard was on the deck. Yep. Likely going to uh, Stalker. It's like everybody else has a shard at this point. Space for it. He like, actually has no space in his inventory. Said. I dropped something, brother. I'm going to Lambert, actually. Alright. So, uh, getting some some percentile health on his blood rage. That there. might be super deadly, actually. I would be most very of the, afraid uh, of that. Most of the radiant is tanky through uh, through things like evasion rather than health per se. So it's likely going to have less of an impact in this game than it would in most. I don't know, Naga does have a pretty considerable HP pool. True. But then she also uh, has other ways of dealing with Bloodseeker. No. Okay, good ice pass. And uh, goodbye. Son of Cern, yep. Yep, just Feeling songs to carry here. Lush finishes an Octarine. After what should have been disaster, I will say, uh, Dyer has been doing a good job trying to keep themselves into a position where they can still potentially win this. Yep. Mostly just because of how... Just how scary Lambert is. I mean, look at that net worth lead. Right. I do feel like, uh... We did see, perhaps, Naga Siren not taking the most ideal approach to this. Naga Siren trying to play almost a short game here, taking a lot of fights rather than uh, ducking out and farming a lot. Got a load of mines on both uh, both sides here. Yep. I don't actually have anywhere to really push, and just to make matters worse, Naga Siren illusions uh, mess with the equilib as much as possible. Yep. Kiro and uh, Lion have themselves a little spat at the edge here as oh uh, snakes are dropped right on the tower. Lesh just trying to eat it as fast as possible. Techie's actually blowing up Lambert at the side of the fight, which uh, is definitely not going to be good. He actually is by and back. Boots are traveling back into the fight here. Oh, yeah, Kiro uh, coming back in kind. Bloodseeker pops his uh, BKB, but he's getting body blocked by Creep, so it actually completely gets uh, nulled out. I don't think it'll matter terribly much. Oh, oh it will! God. He's standing on a billion mines! Techies really kills Lambert is, yeah. twice in a row. And Naga's able to come back in. Oh god, this fight is distressingly winnable even without yep. Bloodseeker. But ultimately it won't. Nope. Just, uh... Just lose five there. For one range rack, which really is definitely not worth. We lose six actually because uh, he had the Bloodseeker die back. It's especially unfortunate. He did not realize. I don't think he was getting bloody blocked by creeps. I think he was just looking at the fight itself and not really yeah. considering what was uh, happening to him. Had that not been the case, very likely that would have been uh, it for for the Radiant. But no such luck. It happens. I see what he was going for this, because, uh, you know, Song was up, just walk right. into the fight freely. Yep. Also probably started off farther away than he, uh, thought he was there. Yeah. Dyer's it happens. Has fallen. You can sort of push here. I'm likely gonna see three buys here. Yeah, they don't have terribly it's much time or space, despite what it looks like. Dyer's 
Dyer's top tower is under attack. They're buying up here. Yep. Flesh alone was not enough to uh, scare them, it seems. As a uh, concerted effort on top still continuing, they uh, knock out the T3. Flesh coming in with uh, a lot of offense. Nightstalker wants to do some offense of his own, but really, uh, he's just too scared to get in. By time. That's all they're doing. That's all they need to do. It's by time. And ultimately, uh, the Radiant take the uh, take Rax up here, take the range Rex for a much less harsh toll than the Dyer did for the same result. Money changes hands. Money officially has changed hands. Wow. Notably, that uh, net worth, that net worth lead that Bloodseeker had to such a high degree has shrunk considerably over the uh, course of the dieback, going yeah. from about 10k up over second place to a mere 3k up over second place, and uh, only uh, only 6k above the top of the radium right now. They're looking for a uh, another agent to try and end things out here, but probably waited out. I'm guessing. One notable thing is, at this point, Lambert is completely six-slotted. He's, uh, he's gonna have MKB up, but it's not gonna be much of an increase in his uh, offensive capabilities unless your name is Windrunner. And, yep. uh, past that, he's done. It's not gonna be much of a damage steroid. I mean, it's a decent amount. Once he's got that, he's done. All he's got is, like, Moonshard and Axe Blessing. And I would be, uh... A little surprised if he decided this was the time to go for Axe. I mean, it would be very good for him, but, uh... It's very late in the game to be considering the option. Yeah. Let's get it from next to Roche, like, more than likely. Right. Who's up? Roche is back. Yep. Both teams, uh, eyeing it. This is a very important objective. Right. Next Roche really likely wins the game, to be frank. Yep. Well, actually, it's a very sad position because if not, if NWA gets the uh, ag the Aegis here, it's a very good chance they win the game. If Dyer gets Aegis, it's good, but not a guarantee, you know. Right. Hanging it out, looking in. Dyer are scanning. Dyer are scanning. So find nobody in there. They're actually uh, going to smoke into Roche. Or maybe they're going to smoke for Weaver. I would definitely smoke into Roche over smoking for Weaver. He's just not that valuable of an objective, to be honest with you. Fear does quiet magic, but uh, it's going to mean very little. Especially when you get chased right into a stack of a billion mines. Smoke completely wasted there. Happens. That was, uh, I believe that was the that was the 8 second, okay. That was not the 9. Actually not going to try and rush here, trying to just uh, hassle the tower from far away. Yep. Naga looking at the the Roche here with an illusion. Whittling him down here. A little bit. Oh. I believe that's the real Naga. Maybe we'll find nothing. Yeah. I'll say this much. Uh, inspiring them to go to Roche might not have been the play if you didn't have any significant ability to uh, follow up on it. Line just going to completely waste the Windrunner ult. Yep. As Lambert just really casually eats Roche here. Got a song in, but uh, lots of BKBs to follow, so really nothing comes of it. Song's actually not popped yet. Oh, you're right. Looks like you're just losing a million okay. HP here. Big uh, group hex there, but nothing really comes as a result. We've got the uh, Song of the Siren. Windrunner are actually still dying through it. And his uh, Windrunner dieback as well. Nugget's just trying to get the hell out of there, but uh, no such luck as uh, Lambert just tears her to shreds. That's dieback on both of the uh, VIPs. Oh, yeah. Oh. They're not actually going to go for uh, yeah, they don't the rest care of them. Yeah, they're so not going to go for the rest of the towers here. They're actually going to go right for fours, which is not a bad idea, because there's really not many mines there at all. So, uh, Lashrak's got a bit of a different idea. Flesh trying to play Lashrak. We got, uh, we got twin snakes here. 
two different sets of snakes up on the uh, T fours. Weaver just getting uh, hassled right Pretty in front good. of his own racks or in front of his own base, and that's the ball game. Blood calls to blood. Gotham calls to GG. Right, the the ain't should naturally explode by the time it comes up. Yep. Right. I will say. What a game. I feel like the uh, the notable thing there. I feel like this actually probably would have lot worked a lot better with a more traditional. Uh, composition for Nagas. I think if they had gone with the uh, with Manifest Destiny on the Naga and Gotham on the Techies, we might be looking at yep. a different scenario here, to be honest with you. I think a, uh, a good part of the defeat came from the fact that Nagas didn't really take that much advantage of the Techies that they had. He personally got a lot of kills and that was all well and good, but they didn't take a lot of the advantage of the uh, space yep. at that uh, Techies was able to create, even though it went for uh, 40 minutes, Naga, the flash form expert, never actually uh, topped out Bloodseeker in the net worth. In fact, uh, really only in parity with her pause 3 and pause 4, which is not not the most ideal situation for a pause 1. You can tell that uh, Gotham has, uh, <clears throat> well, let's just say he finds a lot more success in that support role than he does his core, I think uh, would be the, right. the best way to put it. It's uh, quite difficult to say much more than that. I mean, they had a good yeah. techies lineup and they bought themselves a time, but I don't think they managed to that time particularly effectively. Uh, notably, the Windrunner it was able to go all defensive items, and that was great, but uh, the lack of any real physical defense meant that even though she was basically untargetable by most skills by the end of the game, uh, the the physical side of the matter was not actually the same. The moment that Windrun fell off, Bloodseeker just ate her, right? And the supports were doing a good job actually powering through the BKB and the uh, Lincolns to try and get that to happen. So I do think um, the atomization there wasn't the most ideal, wasn't the best right. possible uh, situation for them. Um, Techies actually got a disproportionately large amount of money for this, um, yeah. buying up a full Ags and Octorane. The Naga Siren, like I said, just wasn't really able to use the time quite effectively enough. I feel like made some uh, some miscalcs with some of the songs as well. Um, had a few songs there that really did not end in much good being done. And uh, Weaver was not really able to participate until the very end of the game. He has a pretty decent looking KDA, but that's mostly from just being the guy getting like picks on the supports during fights, for example. You know, just comes on with yeah. the Sakuchi when they're already 90% dead sort of situation. It's Weaver's job, but... It yeah. is his job, but that's... Unfortunately, he wasn't really able to contribute to the fights beyond that. Just from the uh, the pick, I do think the uh, the Weaver pick there did not end up playing off very well for them. Just was not going to in any reality. He did okay in spite of it, but, you know, it's the best you can say there. On the other hand, uh, I think Radiant's race, especially early on, showed a lot of very good coordination. You can definitely tell that that, uh, that chemistry, which uh, so far has been mostly, like, a as far as that really high-level chemistry, has mostly been restricted to Lambert and Princess, is starting to spread to the rest of the team as well. And even though they had to have a stand-in then, the stand-in didn't do bad. You can tell he wasn't quite on the same wavelength with guys, you know, he would just randomly kind of pop off to rap whenever they wanted to have a fight with him there, for example, but... Um, as far as raw play goes, he did pretty well. I feel like, funnily enough, if this guy was, like, their main mid by this point, that he would probably be in a fairly similar position to Princess, because he's definitely a good player. Um, yep. I don't know if that really solid chemistry would be there, that, you know, you can't really see that in the course of one game, I don't think. So, uh, see you next time. Game two. Well, actually, before I go, you got anything to say about this one? Nothing in particular. All right, see you in the next game.